Hey, hey, it's the truck edition of the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope everybody's doing good. Um, yeah, I'm going to get my, um, my state inspection this morning. So I had some extra time and I thought I would pop on. I had a super cool cosmic dream last night. It really blew my mind. And it followed another one from the night before that was really cool. So I thought I'd share. Um, two nights ago, uh, I once again dreamt that I could levitate. Um, and this variation on the dream, much like the one before in which I levitated, um, was with a lot of other people instead of me just by myself. This time, it was members of my extended family. I was teaching members of my extended family how to levitate. And um, this is just like a couple feet off the floor this time, like in a, in a living room or something. And um, my cousin Jennifer, who's about the same age as me, I was, I was like, yeah, let me show you how to do it. And I took her hand and, um, and then we rose together. So that was pretty neat. That was really all I remembered about that one. Now, of course, uh, my pal Diane uh, says, oh, you know, maybe someday uh, I'll actually be able to levitate. That'd be awesome. Woohoo! I'd be all over that, like, uh, stink on you know what. But, um, but I don't know about that. But if, uh, if it happens, I'll let you know. Um, levitation would be awesome. Um, I don't think there's any way for you to tell. Sorry, I'm getting a little off topic already. Um, but that those fires, those wildfires in Canada, uh, they are affecting the Northeast. You know what, actually, I'm gonna flip the camera for a second. Here's the view of the sky. Um, I don't know if you can tell, because I can't see the view that you see right now, how hazy it is. It is super hazy. And um, that is the, the wildfire smoke, which, that's pretty sad and pretty scary. Um, they had it in New York City uh, yesterday too and today, and they were showing they were showing how yellow the sky looks and how the sun looks kind of like sort of not blotted out, but you can definitely tell there's a, there's a sun haze. So um, I think this is. Uh, they anticipate maybe the last day for a while. I, I noticed the air quality difference. Um, I'm not I'm not having too bad of a time uh, rest with my respiration. I don't know if that's because I've also been getting allergy shots um, for the past six months, and this spring has not been as bad as usual. Um, so maybe the shots actually work, which would be amazing because I really get them quite bad each year summer especially anyway let me tell you now about the other dream um, sorry I got to keep an eye on the directions here too the dealership where I go is actually kind of far from me it's up in the north in the rural area uh, of Buffalo called Ransomville um, I went up there initially to, to buy a vehicle because it was a little cheaper than in the city and now I just let them do all my service one because it's nice and quiet up there and it's not super busy like the city shops so um, yeehaw I'm going to the country so yeah now the cosmic dream last night I had a dream I was in a uh, I'll call it a cosmic classroom a cosmic classroom because it was they were teaching, there were different, there were various teachers who were teaching us a kind of advanced math that was super confusing to me. They had written like on a piece of paper how to, how to graph all this math on graph paper and it reminded me of being um, in, um, in pre-calculus in high school which I eventually quit because I, in my senior year, I was like, I don't want to be this stressed. This is too hard. Um, 
and I didn't need the credits, and my teacher was so disappointed. Um, but I just like, eh, screw it. I'd rather have study hall. I was I was a pretty good student, so um, I didn't I didn't need the extra didn't need the extra uh, cl a class there. Wanted to enjoy it more. So yeah, I'm in this classroom, this this advanced math cosmic classroom, and the teachers are kind of quirky. Like um, they almost um, they have a strange aura about them, as if they're. Uh, uh, you know, a little bit touched. Um, the one guy who was teaching us had long hair. He wasn't particularly old, and he, um, there was something kind of, he was very artsy, and there was another woman there who was a teacher too, that a friend of mine waved to at one point, and she just like, um, like she was passing through, and he was like, hey, Mrs., Miss, you know, whatever, Mrs. Smith, How's it going? And she just like kept walking without even paying attention to him. Like he was maybe trying to suck up to her for a second and she had no interest. She was in her own mind. But so they're teaching us this advanced math and um and we're supposed to graph it on graph paper. And like the lines and the angles and all of the all of the instructions are like Greek to me. I am completely baffled by what I'm seeing. I just do not understand it at all. And much like in my high school pre-calc pre-calculus class, I'm like, why do I want to do this? Like this is like I don't even I don't even understand what you're asking me to do. Like I'm completely confused. And it feels like even to begin to gr even to begin to grasp what you're asking me to do, let alone do these whatever 10 pages of exercises um, seems impossible like a way above my level but what was interesting was the teacher was pretty cool so um, he said well and actually before I get to it, what he said I was I was sitting next to my old bandmate Tim uh, who is a bass player and I played with Tim about 20 years ago and we haven't played together for 20 years, but he recently did a reunion show uh, with me for our old band. And um, so he was in the dream, and actually a few of my other ex-bandmates were in the dream. So all musicians, right? Music and math have a relationship, obviously. Um, so Tim was there, and he, he started plugging away. Like, And Tim is kind of like that. Like He's, like, um, he's very cerebral. He... Um, I think he would be good at at advanced math. I'll have to ask, I'll have to tell him about this dream, and I'll have to ask him if he was good in math because he has a kind of mathematical mind, and he's always liked um, electronic music too, and stuff where he can really tinker on a computer. So we have some crossover in that we like to work on music by ourselves, um, you know, sitting at a computer alone sometimes, just like a mad scientist. So Tim was actually starting to do the diagrams and, and like do chart stuff and I'm like talking to him. I'm I'm looking at him I'm like I don't even I'm I'm so lost. And another guy was starting to do the work and I really felt out of uh, out of rhythm. And then the teacher with the, the long hair who was kinda cool said um uh tell you what listen listen and he had this bundle of CDs except it was in a really fancy container it was kind of like a I don't know how to describe it um, it was like a shell case um, and um, he said listen to these 10 CDs of music because the music and the math that I'm asking you to do are exactly the same if you, if you understand the music, if the music starts to speak to you, then you will begin to also understand the math. And um, there's a lot of tangents I could go on from here, but I'll try to be brief because I'm driving 
and because I can't think of them all, all of all the ideas that I would want to um, share right now anyway in the moment, but, but we kind of know that math and music are interchangeable, like when you, music can be written down on a piece of paper, uh, it can be, you can be instructed to perform the notes in a musical composition, but really the magic of music is bigger than the, the written page. When ensembles or groups of any size perform together, or even a person performs a piece of music by themselves, what the subtleties that you can bring to music from your own feelings and your own intuition and your own preferences, they, they bend what's on the page a little bit. The page, you could give 10 musicians the same sheet of music and each one of them would give you a different performance and you could give 10 bands the same sheet of music and each one could give you would give you a completely different performance because of the individual styles and and every aspect of performance like how hard you play or how softly you play or the kind of in, instrument you have like if it's say it's a vocal performance everybody's voice is different um, everybody sounds different in different ranges of their vo of their voice there's so many variables so um, and, and the magic I always feel in music really comes from something that is also beyond the page it's it's the, it's really the soul that you're putting into the music it's the feeling sometimes when you see a performer um, you can just tell when they're having when they're when they're having a great day because the music is more inspired and sometimes that inspiration comes from the feedback of the audience um, and sometimes it's it's the relationship between the performer and the audience but I digress the point is that I have felt for a long time that what some physicists say is true, that the universe is actually kind of like a musical instrument, that the vibrating str the strings, the strands of matter that they talk about in string theory, um, that, that the universe vibrates like a musical instrument, that reality itself is musical. And since, as I already explained, really math and music are the same thing because the, the, the basic um, structure of a musical composition can be explained in a mathematical form, um, they really are one and the same. You know, math and music are the same thing. And, and as I always say, math and magic are the same thing because I think of the creator as, as a deeply mathematical being and also a deeply sensitive, creative artist. And it's the marriage of those two things that makes life what it is. It's why we, we have the the range of emotions we have and the experiences that we have because I really feel that God is both highly computational because this universe is so well constructed and deeply emotional. Um, I mean, if truly we're made in the image of the creator, um, the creator must have feelings too. Uh, that's just my sense of it. Strong feelings. <laughs> So, um, I related uh, this dream to my mom brief briefly in a text this morning, and she said, oh, that's kind of like um, what they're saying about, what did she say, about alien civilizations and how they try to communicate to us, um, supposedly, through, like, say, crop circles. Like, supposedly, crop symbols are, well, they're a form of math. They're, they're all, the shapes are always mathematical, and if we 
understood the lang that that language, that advanced math, we would understand more things about maybe the nature of reality itself. So what I'm suggesting is, is that these are all languages that are interchangeable. Like music is a language, math is a language, the spoken word is a language, feelings are a language, um, and um, when you learn how to, how, how, how to, when, when you learn that language, then you have another way of expressing um, how you feel about the world or expressing concepts in the world. And some people, um, they only express themselves well in one way more than another. There are some musicians I know who are um, incredibly dynamic on stage and maybe not really verbally, you know, not real talkative in person or not able to express themselves well in person. Um, you know, same thing with like dance or, um, or theater. It's a, it's a, it, again, they're all languages um, that, uh, well, you know what I'm saying. Sorry, I'm getting distracted because I'm coming up on an exit. I'm good. It's all good. But, um, yeah, my mom was suggesting that maybe like advanced math and, and um, music and things like that like would be a way for um, perhaps for more advanced alien civilizations to communicate with us. That's certainly possible. But I also really believe that these are all the languages of um, the creator behind it all, the creator. So, there was one interesting point in the dream where one of my favorite bands that I've talked about before um, is no longer together. They were a group from the 80s and 90s called Talk Talk. They're a British band, and they started as a British sort of, sort of electronic pop band, almost like a, like a kind of a quasi Duran Duran, but they soon deviated into very experimental um, jazz, heavily jazz influenced music, but also mm, with a lot of orchestral elements like strings and other uh, orchestral instruments and even like bits of blues and folk and um, sound experiments, just layering sounds in an interesting and emotional way. And again in the dream, and I listen, I, I listen to the band Talk Talk almost every night to help me go to sleep. Their music is really complex. Um, it's really multi-layered. Sorry, I have to make a turn. And when I listen to it, I hear I hear multiple layers of sound. And it's it's even a little difficult to tell what instruments you're hearing at, at, at certain times. Like um, it, probably what I'm what I'm perceiving is multiple instruments working together to make a combined sound, but it's hard to distinguish the individual instruments um, from one another, which is part of what makes the music interesting because it's it's somewhat mysterious to me. But again, if I if someone gave me a talk talk recording and it had all of the different um, tracks of music and I could listen to them one by one in isolation, then I would be able to like understand better how the layers combine to make the music what it is. Um, and I think that that was the same idea in the dream that once you once you kind of get once you kind of begin to understand the the little the little bit I can't express this well. Once you begin to understand like you you need, you need an entry point to this to this math, musical math that this teacher was trying to, to teach us about. Um, once you have an entry point, once you grasp one of the maybe basic concepts, then you can begin to build and understand more complicated concepts over time. But you need an entry point. And that's what the teacher was trying to give me when he gave me the 10 discs of music. And he's like, He's like, you will probably understand this once you listen to it. And
and um, either he, the teacher, or my friend Tim at that point said, hey, you know that band Talk Talk that you love so much, that you find so mysterious, if you, if you, if you understood this more advanced um, math slash music, if you began to understand that, I bet you would begin to understand Talk Talk better too because it's along the same trajectory. Um, and um, then I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I'm gonna listen, I'm gonna listen to this music. And that's where the dream ended. So I didn't get to hear the music, but it, it was still, I really, again, I felt like I was in a cosmic classroom. I felt like these were like sort of, sort of had really advanced ideas being shared with me. Um, and I, I really enjoyed it, it was neat. And in my own music, um, something that I've been doing for the last several records is uh, definitely inspired by Talk Talk and some other bands where I have been doing a lot, adding a lot of experimental sounds um, to, to my songs when I'm doing record versions. Like I'll write the basic song and I'll record the basic structure into, into my um, computer program. So it's got, you know, say guitars and a vocal and maybe uh, drums and bass. The basic instrumentation you would find in most pop rock. But then I go back and I, there are ways of creating sound with keyboards or with effects pedals or with um, special effects on the computer where you can take a, any sound and you can um, modify it, alter it. You can kind of like twist and bend sound in such a way that the original sound is just a starting point and the way you manipulate the sound um, can can uh, make it very, very mysterious and and strangely moving. Sometimes when I take a bit of music, take a performance, say like on a keyboard and I run it through some different effects and I experiment a bit more with it, I discover that there's a, an emotional quality attached to um, making those kinds of changes to the original sounds and that the entire song then starts to have a different kind of emotional weight to it and often the emotional weight that is added is beauty is beautiful and mysterious at the same time and I guess that's another way of sort of even really expressing my feelings about life that there is much beauty and much mystery and um, the more music I make uh, the further I aspire to add those qualities as much of those qualities into my music as I can and that is always an emotional an emotional thing sorry turning again you can't, you can't make really great music, in my opinion, unless you are well in touch with your feelings. And sometimes, when you're feeling, out, when you are out of touch with your feelings, or at least for me, music can get me back there. I just have to crack open the door and start working on a song, and then as I explore the song the song begins to fi fix me and to, and to give me something back in the process of creating it. And that's where perhaps those are instances where we're really working with the divine in a, in a greater sense when we're in a creative mode. And this can be anything. I mean, it, it can be making art, making music, painting, uh, cooking, sewing. Um, there are all kinds of creative acts that are not just uh, the formal arts. And these are the ways in which we can connect to, again, to the, to the greater, the greater
greater um, power that is the, the creator behind it all, the, the source of all creativity in my opinion. And it's a, it's a way of reconnecting ourselves to ourselves. And that's why I, um, I put so much into the music I make because it's not necessarily for everybody, but for the people who, who are touched by it, hopefully they'll be like deeply touched and maybe reconnected to pieces of themselves if they are finding themselves disconnected. And this is true in the writing that I do too. I am, I am expressing um, the way that I perceive the world and my, my strange um, experiences within it um, in hopes that others will um, kind of like embrace their own truths, embrace their own experiences and feel more connected to the greater whole to themselves and to the greater whole. So uh, there you have it. I'm almost at my destination, so I'm going to wrap this up. I hope you could hear it okay. Um, I wish I could impart how, how inspiring this dream was. Maybe I have. But again, yeah, like math. Yeah, the music and the math are one. The creativity and the math are one. And you can understand the one through the other interchangeable languages yeah so again my mom suggested hey you know maybe maybe some of this is uh, part of uh, a forthcoming sort of alien reveal and that these are advanced messages to to some of the sensitive people um, about a higher level of awareness you know maybe what what some of the psychics have described as the transition from 3d to, to 4D, or sometimes they say um, from 4D to 5D, because they count time space as a dimension, and that the fifth dimension is, um, well, who knows what the fifth dimension is until we get there, but it would be a, an even, um, a very, another unique way of, exp of understanding, experiencing reality. Okay, a um, little bit of... Um, wandering in this video so pardon that i uh, hope you have a great day and talk to you next time bye